You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for June 8th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we know the lyrics of every single song we force the Marine Corps band to play, it's The Professional Left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hi there. God bless America. God bless America. Yeah. He should have just stepped aside and said, oh, no, the Marine Corps chorus sings so much better than I could. They do. Um, Dude. But then it wouldn't be all about him, you know. Yes. I think it was the U.S. Army Chorus and the Marine Corps Band, but I'm not okay. sure. Not 100% but they sure. were great singers. You could yeah. tell oh. that they really, you know, belted out. And the common, the common dance zone. I mean, these, these yeah. guys do this all, practice all, all day, day long. long. And they're yeah. fantastic. They yeah. are fantastic singers. And I would have just said, oh, no, I, as your commander in chief, I really want to hear you guys sing. You don't need me. But Well, and it, was the, it was the entire context of that exactly disaster that completely fake racist um manufactured bullshit um event Mm -hmm. that donald trump completely shit on by blaming a whole bunch of people who are black athletes for Mm -hmm. doing things they did not do right and and then they decided you know what i really don't want to come to your house if you're going to be an asshole about it and then declaring that they hated america And then Mm -hmm. bust in a whole bunch of RNC staffers and call them, you know, fans, football fans, which they most assuredly weren't. Who didn't know the name of the quarterback of the Philadelphia team. Of their own own hometown, (laughs) uh, allegedly. And then uh, used, this is straight up Republican strategy, used the military as props. Yep. A bunch of soldiers behind him singing a song he did not know the words to and just stood there like the giant ignorant asshole that he is because fuck it it doesn't matter it's not like i'm that black guy and people are right. gonna you know burn me to the ground if i forget to wear a lapel pin or or don't put my hand on my heart every single time or wear a tan suit i'm donald trump and yeah. <laughs> my morons love me so fuck you people well and a gold star literally to the guy who took a knee at yeah. the event <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that was very funny well, we have some. Do you want to start with personal news, or do you want to start with Dukakis khakis? Uh, well, we can start whichever you like, Blue Gal. You're the sound yeah, editor, so whatever order you want it to be yeah, in is the order. Let's gonna... start with personal news, right. and uh, and go from there. Well, I got laid off. You got laid off again. So my job. Yes, uh, I, can't, I can't hold a job, Blue Gal. It's, it's so clear. <laughs> you held this job it's... for six years. You did fine. <laughs> in fact, the people that I've told this to come back with, uh. Very similar stories of uh-huh. going in a different direction, getting a yes. consultant. Yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and we're going and, in a different direction. Yeah, we're going in a different direction, mm-hmm. etc. And the fact is that you pretty much started this organization as its as its head, as it's currently constituted. I, as it's currently constituted, and who knows what it'll be tomorrow? But sure. the point the point is, you really from the ground up we're with this organization yes. and yes. uh frankly i think you and i together uh yesterday when we you and you got this news um you've been talking about wanting to leave this job for a while well it, it's just right? it's it's not going to get any bigger right it's not it's not going to grow right. to the point where it can be um something it, it doesn't pay for my health insurance no it doesn't it pay, do, it's no. not full-time yeah not, it pays less i've said this before it pays less than a paper boy makes yeah um and yeah. i'm and, and i'm on call for it pretty much 24 7 exactly uh, it doesn't i don't work 24 7 but it's definitely not a part-time job physically or psychologically right i've been fired from better places blue gal yes right <laughs> and right. and this is it's a small town i don't want to you know burn any bridges and i, yeah. I don't plan yeah. to so it was amicable, but it was very clear that they had decided that uh, uh, there was there's an executive committee that I knew nothing about um, mm. <laughs> that they that I was informed of this sort of secondhand. But it was very much, um, you know, nope, uh, your services are no longer needed and you can decide how you want to play this. But next week, you're not going to be here. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. OK. All right. That's fine. Um, no harm, no foul. Good luck right. and God bless. And right. but that means I am once again uh, at liberty, as they say in vaudeville. And we're 
trying to fundraise to make up for your paperboy in- income. Yes, we, we kind of are. <laughs> that pays the car bill and the yeah. uh, oh, groceries. So it, it, no, every you know. every piece of income that comes in our house through whatever portal mm-hmm. is immediately put to work. Yeah. And we lost our Amazon income last year. So we did. We lost half of the income we had at the time from the podcast. And we've made some of that up, but yeah. uh, not nearly what we were getting from Amazon. No. So if you have never donated before to a podcast, now is the time <laughs> to do so. Yes, it <laughs> Especially is. if you're someone who goes, where's the podcast on Friday? Yeah. Uh, we're talking to you. Or if you know of a really good job uh, that <laughs> pays in real, a lot of money. greater Springfield, Illinois area. Yeah. Uh, or it pays enough for you to move to another city and dislocate my entire family doing so. And you, the conditions for that have to be really good. Yeah. No, no, I, this is – I. I, I mean, my job used to be understanding labor markets and labor market statistics and the movement right. of, of labor and how jobs are created and how they're destroyed. I know all that shit. Trust me, I do. And there's no way in the world I'm uprooting my entire family on the roll of a dice mm-hmm. that maybe this thing will last six months. Because I've, right. I've already been in jobs that it looks great. It looks great. We love you. love you. Oops, funding ran out. Sorry, you have to go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and part of it is, Drift Glass, that part of what you do and Part of why I admire you so much is you're one of those people that donates part of your labor to the cause of what you're working for. Yeah, so yeah. you are a nonprofit guy. You are a government guy. You are a guy who takes the lower paying job that has some sort of social element to it yes. to get people yes. jobs, to get people who are ex-offenders or are, True. True. you know, help helping train people for businesses that might not have any idea how they can train people and you mm-hmm. find ways to do that. So I admire that about you. And now we're going to move on to our Let's fake move on sponsor. to the people who really pay the bills around here. Right. Our fake sponsor. We're courting some new fake sponsors. Hopefully, you know, double zero is still zero blue gal, but still uh, <laughs> Dukakis khakis. Of course, Michael Dukakis line of sensible men's pants. Dukakis khakis. They're not so good for running in. And, and we have these other ones, but I think you wanted to spend some time this week with where the good Lord split you. Emergency farewell party planners. Yes, indeed. First of all, I'm now a customer. He didn't get one. He didn't get a cake. Yeah. I didn't get, <laughs> I, I got, I, I didn't get a cake. I got, you know, shown the door. Um, yeah. There'll be no farewell party. There'll be no sheet cake for me. There'll be no little roads. Uh, no, thank you for years of service, but that's, that's fine. Um, however, uh, in the main, the good people at where the good Lord split you, emergency farewell party planners are doing great. They are. Um, they they are. Real, they're, they're just kicking ass and taking names. In fact, they're doing so well, they might actually turn into a real business, in which case <laughs> we'd kind of be screwed because they'll probably sue us for something. <laughs> uh, there's, there are plenty of people in Washington, D.C. who are getting work. Every lawyer in D.C., as far as I can tell, has a job either on cable news. Explaining stuff. Exactly. We're all getting a law school education. Defending the worst human being ever to occupy the White House. Absolutely. However, all of those are temp jobs. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And at some point... Uh, either we're just going to have tanks rolling in the streets and we're going to be a full-blown fascist dictatorship, in which case lawyers are, are one of the first three professions to either join the Nazis or disappear, or some very bad things will happen to the people in the White House, uh, in which case they'll suddenly have nothing to explain because we'll be in the middle of something entirely different. Yep. So – um, uh, we can only hope that Rudy Giuliani just does well. And it looks like uh, Kelly Sadler's not going to get a cake either, even though she no. left her job at the White House. It's so sad. It took them two weeks to figure out an exit strategy for her. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the exit strategy is we're going to find you another job yeah. in the White House. <laughs> I, I got to say, in the last 24 hours, because mm-hmm. I, I, you know, we do notes for the show and I do writing of my blog and we do an awful lot of reading and politics right. and so forth just for to, up with things. And every time I, I saw the story about uh, Ms. Sadler, uh, Kellyanne Conway, Hugh Hewitt, you know, just all yeah. these people, I go, oh, that fucker still has a job. That fucker still yeah, has a job. Yeah. That fuck, oh my God, that fucker still, that fucker makes $7 million, you know, every three months. Yep. Holy yep. shit. And they're horrible people. And it, it does, and this isn't just me personally, it really is a matter of um, conservatives will spend billions of dollars mm-hmm. to move the needle for, for cultural argument. They will lower the collective IQ of 30 million people just so they can get their shit done. Yep. Yep. Honestly, liberals, deep pocket liberals, J.B. Pritzker liberals, 
throw around, as I've said before, nickels like manhole mm-hmm. covers. They don't want to spend money on any. They want to spend money on big vanity projects that never go anywhere and well, don't accomplish I don't much. Think, I don't think J.B. Pritzker's run for governor is a big vanity. It is no, a vanity no, no. project, but it is going somewhere. I think he's going to be the next governor. But he has spent how much? One hundred million dollars. One hundred million, or he's million about to. dollars on his of his own money gubernatorial campaign, and yeah. this is not the this is now the general election in Illinois, but. Yeah. You know, it's not campaign season for the general election yet. He hasn't spent so, the big money ads yet. So no, I, so I gave him a dollar. <laughs> so so the average donor to J.B. Pritzker spends 50 million dollars. Million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we got a email tonight from Betsy Londrigan's campaign. She's running we for did. Congress in the Illinois 13. And uh, I guess she's going to have some sort of house party where the minimum donation is two fifty. So we're not going to oh, that no. one. No. But is that the one this weekend? Or? No, the one that this weekend is for poor people like us. We get to go. Good. We get to go to the campaign headquarters Ooh. and eat a donut. But she's also having one out at those golf course houses, like a house yes. party thing. Yes. If we wrote a check off of our credit card for $250, we could go yeah. to that. But I think that's sure. I, don't, I don't think that's what she wants us to do. So no, no. we're much more useful out here in the weeds, you know, doing our sneaky thing, and, talking about the news, yeah. moving, the, moving the cultural <laughs> needle a little bit to the left. <laughs> I want to give uh, Stephen Colbert, I, he needs our help so badly, um, but not. But I did want to give him a shout out because he did the podcast bump. We're going to give him the, the podcast uh, the bump. Podcast yeah. Bump. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He gave one of the best monologues last night that I've heard in a long time. It was very, it was, as it is, very topical. Uh, but he talked about Mitch McConnell shutting down the August recess, which is interfering with the election. That's what he's doing. That's the whole point, That's right? The whole point. Uh, and Donald Trump both said that it's Democrats' unprecedented obstruction. Yes. That is causing yes. them to need to shut down the August recess so they can get work yes. done. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and Colbert reminded everyone that you guys run the place, you know, right. <laughs> this is. Right. But he also said, yes, it's true. Unprecedented obstruction. Merrick Garland has been waiting for over two years for that Supreme <laughs> Court confirmation. See, that's just cheating, Blue Gal. And that's just cheating. That joke died. Really? And Colbert looked at his audience and says, you've forgotten already. Yeah. And it's oh so my. sad. And oh so my. I did a post oh about my. that. I He was mad. You could tell. He was like, yeah. oh, you know, come on. Uh, but I have that big blue feather hat that says Merrick Garland across the yes, front yes. top of it. Yes, you do. A Vegas yeah. stripper, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. I won't have my boobs out while I'm wearing this hat. No. But I'm going to wear a big Vegas dancer blue feather hat. With Merrick mm-hmm. Garland spray painted in glitter paint across the front of it, yep. to Mitch McConnell's funeral procession, I'm going to wear yes. that, and I don't care yes. if it's 20 years from now or 30 mm-hmm. years from now or whenever he passes this mortal coil. I'm not wishing anyone dead. I'm not wishing violence on anybody. I'm just saying, I'm well, going to live longer than you, Mitch, and when uh-huh. I do. I'm going to have a Vegas feather hat <laughs> dance with that on. <laughs> well, sea turtles live a long time, Luke. Yeah, you should right. know that. They do. They, they, they're long lived creatures because they, they never, you know, they're, they're slow moving and they have low metabolism. But I'm right there with you. And, and don't get will, me started about how he never has to worry about health insurance because I will never stop throwing up if I have to talk about that now. Okay. Uh, well, no, actually, that's a good segue because yep, it is. Um, in addition, it, it's, it's, I, we wanted to give John Heilman huh. uh, a little bit of a podcast bump today. Uh-huh. Uh, John Heilman, uh, you might remember, is one half of the team of Mark Halperin and Heilman. Yes. Uh, before Mark Halperin was discovered to be a grabby-handed pervert <laughs> and was shown the door. Yep. He, he wasn't given a full Halperin this time, which is, as you know, 30 days on the bench for calling Barack Obama a, a dick. dick. on uh, on he, television. Yeah. On television. And they're giggling about it. He was he was escorted uh, out of the uh, memory, the life and memory of everyone uh, on MSNBC. It's who? We don't know the guy. Never heard of him, but John well, that's Heilman. Not, bless- that necess- that's not actually true because Mika Brzezinski tried to uh, re- rescue him, retcon him, and got, got snippy him. on her show about yeah. 
the his victims and how they wouldn't even give him an opportunity to apologize. Yeah. And uh, the entire Twitterverse and universe and uh, public opinion world, that whole big Internet chorus out there, let her know <laughs> that this was not the moment for that kind of bullshit. No. No, <laughs> and that the victims, the victims decide whether they're going to hear out the mm-hmm. person who grabbed the boss who yes. grabbed them in the elevator at fucking work. And right. if she's going to sit there and do the know your value bullshit from her book for her, uh-huh. her executive women level friends who shop for shoes at Barney's, she can just sit right down and yeah. sit down, Mika. Yeah. Yeah. So the lap of your boyfriend is the only reason you have a job on the network. Well, at all. And, and regardless of all of that, uh-huh. On that particular issue, she had to to shut the hell up. Yeah. yeah. Well, so that's the history of, of Mark Halpern. Yep. Uh, John Heilman used to be his, uh, I would argue, um, long-suffering partner. <laughs> because John Heilman strikes me as kind of, he's got a lot of drift glass in him, Blue Gal. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got a, whenever he sort of gets some running room, he, it's like, oh, shit. Yeah. You, you start talking, you start talking like a... a, a, a the tubertive foul mouth liberal blogger of the left, yeah. as we call each as other. As we call each other. Uh, we are aware of all uh, internet traditions. Yes. We are. So John Heilman was on the Nicole Wallace show. And Nicole Wallace has many attributes that are perfectly admirable, including she gets angrier and pounds the desk harder and wants to know why her Republican Party is full of Republicans. <laughs> she doesn't know why it's all these, where did all these fucking Republicans come from? Tell me, Steve Schmidt, where? Oh, they're all horrible people. They all came out of Donald Trump's ass one night. We were sleeping around a campfire. They just snuck in, and we don't know what happened. Uh, but she was doing one of her tirades about these things, and she is she she is uh, she loves the Bush family. She does. She loves them like I would like say, family. as the saying goes, like family. Well, yeah. yeah, like family, a little bit like that, a little bit like a glutton loves his lunch. <laughs> um, um, she, but she adores them. The greatest, most noble, dignified man who's ever occupied the White House in her lifetime, in her opinion, is George H. W. Bush, uh, one of nature's noblemen, and his son. Whatever, you, it's always followed by whatever you think of him. Mm-hmm. Well, I mm-hmm. think he was a horrible person and a, and a <laughs> shitty president, and he had a monster as a vice president, and he fucked everything up, and he set up the pins for Donald Trump to knock down. That's what I think of him. But John Heilman, you were talking about the despicable tactics of Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. John Heilman dared. Dared to deploy the liberal superpower, Blue Gal, right there on television. Memory? He, he said, well, actually, the most despicable campaign I ever saw in my life was George H.W. Bush. Yep. And his fucking flag wrapping and the Willie Horton the Willie ads. Horton, yeah. And it was just horrible. And you know what? It worked. It worked. That's yep. the point. Yep. It worked. I, 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 you know, we're talking about this won't work again. These people can't possibly. He said, no, no. I thought that when George H.W. did this shit. I thought certainly nobody's going to fall for this bullshit, this overtly racist, uh, hyper patriotic, neo fascist bullshit. But they did. They all fell for it. And and this was in the context of Donald Trump's God Bless America rally instead of having the football players come. Right. Right. And and that really shut things down for a few seconds because it was got to go to commercial. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you mentioned the past, and you said that George H. W. Bush was a rat bastard for hiring Lee Atwater. Yeah. To, to, because he knew it worked. That's the point. The point being that these people know their base. They fucking well know them. the people who plan campaigns know who they're campaigning to. Right. You Absolutely. know, Rick Wilson is not a fucking mystery. Who Rick Wilson Wilson was appeasing every time you ran a shitty rat fucking ad. Absolutely. It's not a mystery why they put Sarah Palin on the fucking ticket. And these people now, you know, beating their breasts going, oh my God, how did it get so bad? It got be- bad because of you. You were supposed to be the fucking grownups mm-hmm. and you let the monsters in the door because it was, it paid it's your money. salary. It's money. Yeah. And it got you elected. And, and, and now, and let, I think this is really important to make the connection yeah. between Citizens United and how yes. rich all these motherfuckers are getting. Yes, absolutely. The networks, the cable news networks, the pundits, and the ad buyers and and campaign staffers and consultants are all making money hand over fist yeah, because absolutely. there's unlimited dark money for them to spend. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, it is both sides. It just is. And the, the one is. side wants to stop it. Jason Kander's right. One side at yeah. least gives lip service to stopping it. The other side sued to make it this way and put right. people on the Supreme Court to 
perpetuate it to keep it this way for yeah, yeah. and i'm not gonna I, i'm not gonna charge you into a tank battle with horse cavalry right i'm not right. gonna do it right. if the other side has tanks i want bigger tanks and once we all decide the tanks are too much that's great but for now there's no way that that we're gonna win with our good intentions and just because we're nice people no yeah. you need a big you need a bigger club as big or bigger and then you have to be on the right side of the issues yep. you have to be on the right side of, you got to be good right with god and on the right side of the issues and the other end of the spectrum by the way i do want to mention aside this actually does play into this uh a new a new local fan oh. uh asked me to mention that she is extremely pissed off that people are hauling bill clinton's blowjob out of the closet 20 years after it happened um, I am too. I am too, um, but in uh-huh. addition to that, I'm pissed at Bill Clinton for thinking that he could write a fiction book and oh, come yeah. on and book tour and be, you know, the jovial Bill Clinton pointing out whatever and yeah. reminding us at a time when we're really trying to mm-hmm. point out that it's not both sides. And he mm-hmm. handed them for his own vanity. Uh and need to be in the spotlight and be creative and whatever else it is, he does not need a book contract. No. And I don't care how no, fun doesn't. it was for him to write a co-write a Washington fiction book. Nobody needs another one of those. And well, I'm sure he th- he thought he was going to go on C-SPAN and be interviewed by you know I don't know the writing whatever process. morning show host. Yeah, and yeah. it's you know how you, and and somebody asked started asking him questions about you know his impeachment, right? And the elements of his impeachment, and it completely flummoxed him, which is. That's just hubris and vanity yeah, and thinking that is. that's not a part of his life anymore. And, and frankly, Bill Clinton 20 years ago wouldn't have been that stupid. No, uh, no. He, he would have right. been that egotistical, but, but he would not have been dumb enough point. to think no oh, one's yeah. going to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it is a measure. It's an excellent barometer of if you just if you just watch like a show like the Joe Scarborough three-hour block in the morning, <laughs> the morning Joe show, the more – nakedly totalitarian and unhinged the Trump administration becomes, the more Bill Clinton gets name checked. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All over the place. And it's like, and because everything with, because now that Joe Scarborough is officially an independent, everything has to and have an Donald equivalent Trump's still of a, a Democrat, by the way. He's a Democrat. He's a lifelong Democrat. Why you, why? And of course he surrounds himself very much like Donald Trump with sycophants yep. who say, yeah, Joe, oh, that's great, Joe. You're so smart, Joe. Uh, but the idea is that, because he's now a newly minted independent who still wants to have all of the Republican policies in place. He just is tired of his friend, Donald Trump, picking on his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. really what it comes down to. And now he wants to get all indignant about that and forget the, you know his 25 years of Republican history. It's imperative that every time he talks about Donald Trump, he has to, say, he has to invent some imaginary liberal problem on the left that it's just like. Yeah. And he's and it's he's like virtually everyone else in the media right now, which is, well, you know, yeah, but Bill Clinton did it, too. You know, Bill Clinton att- attacked Ken Starr. You know, Bill Clinton had a blowjob. I don't know if you know this, but Bill Clinton was impeached. And yes, the problem is we really do remember that. Yes, we do. And we remember we remember the whole context, which is why you're never going to see an actual liberal sitting across from Joe Scarborough. Exactly. Because if there's no way he could survive five minutes with, yeah, but Joe Scarborough was the second special prosecutor. Remember that? The first one was a guy named Robert Fisk. Who said there's nothing here? So your Republican Party gave a, a right wing lunatic a sack of money and said, "Go find something." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it went on endlessly. Yeah. He found that 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 Bill Clinton had had an affair. That's all he found, and that became an impeachable offense because Bill Clinton lied about mm-hmm. it. Now, that's problematic. The, the larger problem is that for Joe Scarborough and the rest of the the scumbags in his universe in his media universe to make that comparison they have to leap over 20 years of presidential history yes they do and they they have to ignore barack obama totally they have to ignore barack obama and george bush and george bush yeah they have to pretend that that those things never that somehow it was we were never lied to war and we didn't have a decent human being who happened to be black and who was slandered and obstructed for eight years as Mm -hmm. president yep yep so let's move on to robert Mueller, shall we sure um Who's asked his uh, the witnesses in what I call Kremlin Gate, <laughs> which will never catch on because it's not catchy enough, uh, turn in their personal phones so that investigators could could inspect their messages. Right. And Sean Hannity, who is the uh, shadow secretary of state and chief of staff and Donald Trump's phone buddy every single night, mm-hmm. 
every single day. Imagine the the most crackpot liberal radio whatever person you can imagine and make that person a thousand times worse. And now make that person the personal guru of Barack Obama and you get some idea. Mm -hmm. And and that every time the, the crazy left person who I'm just inventing for the sake of this argument says something crazy, uh, Barack Obama says the same thing the next day. Right. That's and he's on television about. making three million dollars a month. Yeah, and he's that lying. would never he lies happen. Constantly. He lies constantly. Yes, let's so have Sean that Hannity, happen. Yes. So Sean Hannity yeah. told his his audience that he's advising the witnesses in Kremlin Gate, which will never catch on, to bash their phones with a with a hammer into itsy bitsy little pieces. But he was just kidding. See, he made it really clear he was just kidding. Except as Chris Hayes pointed out today, he kept repeating it. He said it three so, times on one show. He did. Yeah. Just like I believe Sean Hannity should be beaten with a hammer. But I'm just kidding, Blue Gal. Okay. But I seriously, I think Sean Hannity should be hit. But I'm just kidding, Blue Gal. <laughs> Obviously, I'm joking. But Sean Hannity should really be hit with a hammer. Obviously, I'm kidding, Blue Ha-ha. Gal. Just See? kidding. Now, yes. Can I have my money now, please? Three million dollars a month. Show? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Moving on. Well, no, I don't want to move on just yet because okay. that whole monologue was a anti-Hillary conspiracy theory. Yes, it was. Absolutely That's was. That's false. And it was all lies, too. All I mean, lies. The actual yeah. Sub yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. You know, that she bleached phones and she did. Yeah. And it just, it goes on and on and on. All right. Yeah. Uh, you want to talk about the primaries? Because things were I good. I do. I do. Things things were very good. Um, I'm not a Steve Kornacki uh, level uh, guru when it comes to those numbers, nor am I a, uh, uh, a junior dude. No, uh, he's pretty good. Genius. He's pretty at good. That level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we do want to do a shout out again to Michelle Goldberg on, on All In and to Chris Hayes for having her on because both of them are on to what's going on on the ground floor in politics. Mm -hmm. And what's going on on the ground floor is women to women connecting, uh, becoming friends, uh, and working in politics for the first time in their life. And all of us women have had a two-year crash course in political rage. <laughs> you know, yes. as she said, yeah. she said, w there are women who are just so angry that Donald Trump is president. And I would like to add to that, Donald Trump is every man who was promoted over a qu more qualified woman. He's every mm -hmm. man who grabbed you in the elevator or the subway. He's ever, and I'm sorry if I'm triggering anyone. I, I'm that's not my intention, but I can go on. I I will stop just so that I don't every man people. who made you every man who made you feel like shit and got away with it made you feel like shit or afraid or uh, hurt or in any other way less. And not only got away with it, but was promoted and became yeah. yep. stronger and p more powerful and benefited from a system that said you were not worthy. And he is because he's a man and he's got and he's got money and he's white and 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 so yeah. um, the the rage that women are feeling isn't just a pro Hillary rage. It's an unqualified man who is a herter. Uh, jumping over and, and turning out just fine. Mm -hmm. And it is radicalizing women. But the way yeah. women are radicalized, and the this is a push-me-pull-you situation, which is women are talking to women. They're connecting with women on Facebook. They're connecting with women on other social media, on Pinterest, on you know, places where cable news doesn't go to look for news. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, cable news isn't paying any attention because they're women. Right. And so for the most part, uh, I have been shocked, frankly. Uh, and, and this has been pointed out at uh, some websites, you know, how much coverage has gone to Donald Trump's Patriot meeting, Patriot rally, as opposed to Puerto Rico or as opposed to the children that are locked up right now on the border. And it took a U.S. Senator, Jeff Merkley, going there and, and providing a camera, on-camera on story. U.S. Mm -hmm. Senator, white male U.S. Senator can't get in. That's mm -hmm. a story that they will cover. It comes from a position of power and privilege 
and therefore we'll cover it. If it is the children locked inside a building, you know, our country has become a nation where that is, where where we're being told that our choice is either you lock up children or you will be raped by MS-13. Right. Those are your only two choices. Those are your only two choices. Take it or leave it. We have to lock up kids. It's that science fiction story that you've told so many right. times. We have to torture children to have the lifestyle that we deserve. You know, well, that's we have required. To, we have to, those, those who walk away from Amalas, I think. Yeah. The name of it. Yeah. And it's by it's Ursula also, K. Le Guin, right? Ursula K. Le Guin. Yeah. We, have to, we have to invade Iraq right now because, because nuclear weapons. Right. Right. Because much we have to go right now. The only choice, Blue Gal, the only two choices are do nothing and let us all perish in a nuclear holocaust mm -hmm. or invade right now. Right. Right today, right now, gotta go. Thank you, David Frum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was that was David Frum, who has never missed a meal, never missed a deadline, uh, never suffered uh terribly long in the wilderness for being uh, a, a stooge for George W. Bush. Because uh, they'll always find room at the table for the David Frums of the world. And that if you're a woman who's qualified and who can't find a gig out there, that should kind of piss you off, too. Yep. Because yep. if you look down the roster of people who are who are who are commanding the headlines. Well, and who are um, sitting on cable news talking about Donald Trump. And is he really doing this? And what? And oh, look, he doesn't know the words to God bless America. And all of that is newsworthy up to a point. Uh -huh. And we're locking up children. Right. Now, there is good news, by the way, on that story. Um, Donald Trump tried to get the ACLU's lawsuit to stop this practice thrown out of court. And the judge today said, oh, nope. No, <laughs> nope. No. They have a case. Tearing children out of the hands of their parents is a national disgrace from the stand. I mean, he, he didn't make a judgment today on that. But he said, right. this is worthy of discussion and is of discuss. national import that we discuss the fact that the Immigration Department and ICE are tearing children out of the hands of their parents. That is worthy of a case. And you can't just uh -huh. throw it out on. No, we no President can, Trump can do this because it's immigration. And the it's, judge it has said, standing. Judge, it has standing. And, and the ACLU's immigrant project has standing. And. Uh, as uh, you know, I, I want people to kind of understand if they are watching this story closely, realize that it's very important for the ACLU to have specific people that they represent in court and that they aren't representing every child that is being detained or every parent. And that is simply so that they can win the case. They are picking people carefully. Yes. And those people have standing to because they have a, done the right paperwork and they've done the right. You have to have a client that you represent that you can say, yes, this person has a right to asylum, is following the law, is here, you know, it, on on the technical basis of the law as we present it. He is they are here in this country. Uh, whether that's temporary or not, apparently doesn't matter because, yes, you can deport people. Of course you can. But yeah. uh, it's very important the ACLU will be able to choose the right person to represent mm -hmm. all of the children and all of the parents so that they can win in court. So, Well, that's that's you know, that's the Rosa Parks strategy. It's, it is. It is. Right. You pick exactly the right person to to rest the case on. You do it deliberately because so much is riding on it. Exactly. You want to get it perfect. Exactly. Yeah. And you want you want the judge to say, oh, we're throwing all of this out, you know, because yeah. of this one case clearly illustrates that. OK. Uh, so and the primary election results, Ten Grain has a wonderful post up about the California primary. It's called About Last Night, which he does a series of those. <laughs> um, he's a former Californian and really understands sort of how California politics works. Uh, all the pundits are wrong. California is not Dems in disarray. <laughs> there, you know, there's a, there's a lot about California that is too much of a good thing. I will say uh, there are, it's way too easy to get a ballot, uh, per, get on the ballot and get, uh, you know, laws, proposed laws on the ballot. And these ballots are pages and pages long, so it's it's daunting. But uh, this idea on cable news that oh, all Democrats are going to get locked out because there's so many candidates. It's, what you're saying is it's, it's an embarrassment of riches, 
And we're going to get log jammed with so many people running that the Republican will run up the middle. Right. And that if there are is two Republicans running and 15 Democrats, the 15 Democrats right. will split the vote. The two, we'll each two other Republicans yeah. will get more votes because the Republicans will choose one of those two. Mm-hmm. It's the top two that wind up on the ballot. And therefore, you might have a case where there are only two Republicans on the ballot and no Democrats. Right. And that didn't happen. That just no. didn't happen. There was There is one district that is so solidly Republican that it's likely going to go Republican of the yeah. seven that Steve Kornacki says are flippable. And, and Until we watchable. find a cure, Blue Gal. <laughs> Until we find a cure. Well, I, I said that today that Republicans should be like abortion, safe, legal, and rare. Right. Um, you know, we don't want to get rid of them, but we want to make them as as right. unnecessary as humanly right. possible. All right, let's let's have you read down the so much winning column in our, yes. our podcast notes. All right. And, and I, I noticed that uh, uh, Science Fiction University has mysteriously disappeared. Yeah, um, we're we're going to put that at the end of the show. We did have some okay. feedback on that. That it was a okay. little jarring to have science fiction discussed in the middle of the show. And gotcha. I know you wanted to kind of just have a break from all this news yourself, but, and we will. Well, I do want to, but I want to add one back in because it's directly politically related. All right, it's go ahead. Dig me, dig me, Colin. But let's talk about so much winning, shall we? Because sure. uh, I'm not sure if this will be a regular feature like so many things we do. <laughs> it's such a big hit. So much uh, winning. But there, th- it, this week there was so much winning uh, that I, I, my head did start to spin. Uh, I did get tired of it. I started feeling nauseous, and I've overcome that with alcohol, and I'm proud of that. <laughs> um, but but no, this week there was so much winning that France joined with Germany in refusing to sign a deal at the G7 summit without major concessions from the U.S. Wah, wah. So much winning that Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau refused to attend a meeting with Trump to discuss negotiating NAFTA because Mike Pence told him the meeting would only happen if they agreed to a five-year sunset clause. And Trudeau said in the most um, Canadian and polite way possible, go fuck yourself. That's never going to happen. You you orange whore bag fire demon uh, or whatever the Canadian translation. Of it. I think the translation is I had to highlight there was no possibility of any Canadian prime minister signing a NAFTA deal that included a five year sunset clause. And obviously the visit didn't happen. Yep. So that's good. Mexico, apparently we have a country south of us. My God, we're pissing everybody mm-hmm. off. I impose new tariffs on on roughly three billion. That's billion with a B uh, dollars worth of American pork, steel, and cheese. So kiss it goodbye, Wisconsin, because that's pretty much all you have. And other goods in response to Trump's steel and aluminum tariffs. Because see, here's how tariffs work: <laughs> <laughs> you can impose them, but very much like any other bar fight, they're going to punch back. Yeah, and and at, at the end, it's just. It's the end of Blazing Saddles. Everyone's throwing pies and punches at each other, and nobody wins except for uh, Harvey Corman, who sneaks out. Yeah. But he's caught eventually. Yeah. Oh, I spoiled it. I'm sorry. Spoiler. I ruined the ending of Blazing Saddles for you. <laughs> bad, bad drift class. Um, Trump became the first president in history to pass post Bureau, Bureau of Labor Statistic job numbers uh, by commenting on them an hour, more than an hour before they became public. Past posting, you might remember. This is what they did in the sting where they knew the results before the race and they bet on a race that had already come out. So when you're given the job numbers as the president is and you know them before anybody else does, if you leak them or tell your friends about them, they can take huge financial advantage of that knowledge in the intervening time between the time they know about it and the time everybody else knows about it. And Donald Trump, being a two-bit criminal and hustler, uh, probably knows that. Don Jr. as well. Yes, said yeah. said something. Yeah. yeah, no, and and uh, I'm sure that once we have a Democrat, uh, a Democratic chairman of the House Oversight Committee, <laughs> we'll be looking, we'll be into, looking into who invested what on that day yeah. and finding out if anybody some... did a little bit of uh, loss leader stuff on that. Yeah, and that's going to be one hell of a busy committee. Uh, all I can say is they should have five of those committees because there's oh, going to be will. so much. Crime. Oh, they will. <laughs> And, and finally, in the winning department, um, you know, this is the, the man who says clean coal exists mm-hmm. and that asbestos is good because it would have prevented 9-11. Um, Donald Trump has put a tariff, remember the T word just a few seconds ago, on imported solar panels, which has led U.S. renewable energy companies, imported so- solar panels, 
U.S. renewable energy companies to cancel or freeze investments in more than of more than two point five billion with a B dollars. And those There's are so jobs much wrong with that, that cannot be outsourced. Installing right. solar jobs. panels cannot be outsourced to any other people. Yeah. And those are all – you're displacing uh, natural gas, uh, diesel, coal, all the dirty fuels you hate mm-hmm. that we need to move away from. Solar panels are the alternative to that. So not only did he fuck us on the tariffs and fuck us on the jobs, he fucked us on the energy front as well as we are enjoying record high gasoline and prices. fucked us on the environment as well, which yeah. so we all just, know about that. It's a trifecta. It's That's really why... important to elect a Democrat as your yeah. state attorney general, by the way. It really is. <laughs> so he can really, sue the, the thing. fuck out of Donald Trump. That is and the, what the, we got The do. problem is yeah. fucking the environment is Scott Pruitt's job, Ugh. not Donald Trump's. So he just stole Scott Pruitt's job. And Scott Pruitt's busy doing other did, things. Did that you hear about Scott mattresses. Pruitt today and the hand lotion? Yes, I did. Oh. There's a whole list. I, I put a whole list in there. It's... I don't. I don't even know. I. I'm not numb to it or stunned by it. But I'm. I'm just like, wow. It's like it really is. As if you sat down and said, "What's the weirdest, creepiest, most corrupt shit I can do?" Other yeah, than it's. What? It's like he's doing it as a, a dirty grandpa movie. It's like I'm, it's a joke. right. I'm. I. <laughs> he, is, he is. It's. It's like that. That. Uh, Ali G. You know. Yeah. It, it yeah. is. He's he's just he's just being filmed doing this crazy shit. Right. And at right. some point it's I, gonna be this movie that's Borat. It's it is. It's just yeah. Borat all over again. Just Well, they're gonna arrest a guy on the subway mm-hmm. who was jerking off and singing God bless America to Forbes. <laughs> and it's gonna be Scott Pruitt. And you know what people are gonna say? They're gonna say, Well, of course it's Scott Pruitt. That sounds like a Pruitt to that's me. That's a Pruitt. And, and- that's a Pruitt. Pull the Pruitt there. Pull the you know Pruitt. what he? Yep. The yep. There. Yep. All right. I'll read. I'll read these destroying the government Scott Pruitt edition, just in case any of you missed any of these. Oh yeah. Uh, is it ten things? Top ten. This oh, week. Oh my goodness. This, this week. This uh, maybe week. a little bit of last week, but yeah. All right. Yep. So two of Scott Pruitt's top aides that he brought in as political appointments quit because of the stank. Okay. <laughs> When asked about it, <laughs> asked to confirm that these people have resigned. That's all uh-huh. she did. This poor woman from the Atlantic Monthly. She's a she's a relatively new to the job. Uh, I'm asking about it. He, the EPA spokesman, who is supposed to be a communications type person, and paid for by your tax dollars, blue the Gale. media. Hmm. Uh, Said, yeah, you have a nice day. You're a piece of trash. Right. On the record. <laughs> now, here's what I don't understand. Yeah. Maybe given Scott Pruitt's record, he they think that trash is a good thing. I don't know. And, uh, Pruitt and how- has ordered EPA staff to get him a discounted used Trump home luxury plush Euro pillow top mattress for his personal use. That's right. I think I know why, too. Oh, don't say it. It's disgusting. No. Well, it, it's it, I'm not going to be as disgusting as I usually am, Blue Gal. But it, it's like the reason Mike Pence will do everything Donald Trump does, you know, put his water bottle on yeah. the ground when Trump yeah. puts it on the ground. You it, when you when you live in a totalitarian state, you mirror the the literal gestures and behaviors and clothing styles of of the tyrant. Mm-hmm. So Mike Pence, being a craven, soulless scumbag, has got this down. He, he praises him, he lauds him, et cetera. I think Scott Pruitt plans to get naked and just roll around on the mattress, hoping he can smell like Donald I Trump. I see. And so he can get up close to him, and Donald Trump will go, what's that What's that fragrant aroma? What that? It smells like I can trust you. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. give him more shit, lotion, and pens, and whatnot. That's just my theory. Right. Could be wrong. No spoilers now. I'm coming down the list here. Uh uh-huh. Scott Pruitt asked uh, EPA employees to arrange a family trip to the Rose Bowl for him and his family. Uh, asked nice. staffers to uh, drive him around to buy lotion from the Ritz Carlton because Ritz Carlton lotion special. is my favorite lotion. The special Ritz Carlton lotion. 
Ritz just, Carlton lotion is my favorite lotion. I can barely I picture, get those words out. I, I picture, I hate to say this, I picture him with a pit in his basement and lowering a <laughs> bucket down said saying. said that on Twitter, yes. And rubs the lotion yeah, on his everyone skin. Everyone is saying that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They want staff to pick up his dry cleaning. Uh, they've asked him, he has asked staff to order $1,500 of fancy pens. Fancy pens. It proves you're a fancy right. man if you've fancy got a fancy pen. pen. Um, when he goes out to dinner with his wife, they want him to flash. They want staff to flash the motorcade lights. Right. Get me through traffic. Uh, I have lotion to get. Okay. More lotion and then dinner. Uh-huh. Uh, and then I guess this is why his wife is staying with him in spite right. of the Ritz Carlton lotion fetish that he has. What does every woman want, honey? What does every woman want, a really? Chick fil A franchise of her very own. Fucking A. What have I always said? Chick fil A franchise. If you have not seen this video yet, you need to see it of uh, Chow Down at Chick fil A with Willem and Detox. Oh, yes. And yes. there's another one. There's three drag queens singing chow down at chick-fil-a and it is an amazing video and that's why i eat at chick-fil-a is because it doesn't matter if you're gay chow down at chick-fil-a right teaches you that you can eat at chick-fil-a you just have to go in full drag <laughs> right and as i always do you know and even dyke say yay is a line in the song and i no. When I if on the rare instances that I go to Chick Fil A, on those rare instances, because you got to have those waffle fries, I'm always singing that song. Well, my problem is, and this is a real problem, I'm a tall guy. You are a tall guy. Uh, it takes me like two hours to get into full drag. It would. It would take you longer than but that. that. But then I go through the drive through, and it's like it doesn't matter because you're it's too just tall. They can't see you. Yeah. It's just wasted. So I'm like trying to project like they say on, on telemarketing, they can they can hear your smile yeah. on the phone. <laughs> so I, I think they can hear well, the drag. And these, and these uh girls got a convertible for the sh for the video. Oh, see? So shit. shit. See, I knew it. I knew it. They're so obvious. And they're so the the songwriting and the makeup and the way they make the video, all of it is just it's talent. It is such talent. I'm I'm so impressed with them. Okay. If if you were hesitant to contribute to this podcast, please contribute so I can buy a convertible and get, get dressed, dressed up, up in full, full drag. drag and go it's been and done though. Now it's been done. So it's too late. Not, it hasn't been done in Springfield, baby. <laughs> it's new here. Uh well, I don't know. I don't know if that's true actually. There are a lot of talented artists in Springfield. Doing drag, oh, and doing all kinds of things that they're, we don't necessarily really see every day, but um, Springfield's a theater town, so it, it is. really is. Uh, okay, and finally, uh, this was the week that uh, President Stupid, uh, in a cabinet meeting that was supposed to focus on hurricanes, that sure. was going to be what this this was about. This was a FEMA hurricane response. Review meeting. Mm -hmm. President Stupid had to take time out to publicly praise Pruitt for the great job he's doing. Doing a great job. Doing a great job, Scott. What's your name, Scott? Is it Steve? Are you Steve? Oh, Steve, you're doing a great job there, Steve. Jimmy, <laughs> fantastic work with the whole thing with the mattresses and the lotion. I can feel it coming off you. <laughs> Such a beautiful man. So powerful. So powerful. Can I borrow some of that lotion? I'm going to Korea at the north of South Korea. I want to get slicked up. For this meeting, I want him to smell my beautiful power. And that's our president, ladies and gentlemen. That's that's who he is. I, I think wow. points off for for uh, Scott Pruitt not buying Trump Hotel lotion. Yeah, well, you, you know. know. I think there might be. That's that's not good. Boom, boom. See, you fucked up, didn't you there, Scott? See, Scott, uh -huh. what's wrong with you? You mentioned a co uh, you know, competitor of the Trump Hotel chain. I don't think that's good. Your next review is coming up anytime now, Scott. Uh, <laughs> this, was also, the, this was also the point at which uh, Melania Trump uh, appeared in public for the first time yes. in 25 days. Like Brigadoon. And, <laughs> oh, my God. You didn't – now, anybody that had money on Brigadoon being mentioned during this podcast, you just Ooh. won. Pay up. Pay up. <laughs> 
Uh, and we're glad she's doing well. We're glad she's okay. Yeah. Her her so called husband, who's so called president, said she had a rough patch. Yeah, I think she just didn't want to deal with his shit for a, while, a month. Yeah. Can I just stay in the hospital for another three? I'm sure just going to stay out of sight for a month because I'm tired of your bullshit. <laughs> right, and that that I actually completely understand and support. Yeah, yeah. I wish we all could have that. It's my vacation. Goodbye. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I do want to do slide. We have in to a, talk about Dinesh D'Souza. Uh, well, do you want me to talk about the the science fiction thing now that's related? Or well, talk, swing I on want to... you to talk about Digby. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this is a, actually a column at Digby's. It's not yeah. her, but it's at her site, and it's something that we have talked about in the past. And it's science fiction, but it's it's cool. And we'll put the link up. It's foundation. It's entitled uh, "Foundation and Trumpire." Hmm. Uh, foundation is, of course, the Isaac Asimov trilogy that blew out into many other books, but it's basically a trilogy about the collapse of the Galactic Empire and the the foundation that's set up not to prevent the collapse because that's impossible, but to cut the Dark Ages from. 30,000 years down to 1,000 years to basically make the interregnum short and manageable. And the the central character of the story, uh, who, who dies almost immediately, spoiler, spoiler, is a guy named Harry Seldon. Harry Seldon, who's a psychohistorian, has predicted the future and knows where to put this foundation and what resources to give them so that each inevitable crisis that comes up during the collapse of the Galactic Empire actually makes them stronger. So... And the people who live on the planet uh, initially aren't even aware there is this grand project. They think they're there to work on an encyclopedia. But every time there's a disaster looming on the horizon, they call it a Selden crisis because they know that Harry Selden has anticipated this and that whatever they do is the right thing to do because it's inevitable that they're going to do it that way. And by God, every time there's a Selden crisis afterwards, uh, uh, Christ, uh, uh, a hologram of Harry Selden appears in a cave and says, here's what just happened. You had uh, competing uh, local uh, warlords and you pitted them against each other and you used commerce to do this and that. And now you're you're moving on to the next phase. Then comes a creature called the mule. And no one knows who the mule is or what he looks like or why he can do what he does. But he conquers whole planets. And he can turn an entire army against their commanders. And he can make people love him. And no one's seen him. And no, 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 no one knows why he's called the mule. But everyone gathers in the, in the uh, cave because clearly this is a Selden crisis. And Harry Selden got it all wrong. <laughs> the mule was not part of the fucking plan. The mule was a mutation that caught everyone completely unawares. And then the rest of the oh. – and I'm not giving anything away to say that – the rest of that novel and the one that follows resolves that crisis in a particular way. Okay. But the point being, um, Trump somebody pointed is out that, Trump is that person. Yes. Trump is the mule. And, and this it, it's sort of, this is a topic we've circled around a little bit. He's, from our point of view, from the dirty liberal point of view, the inevitable outcome of 30, 40, 50 years of Republican policy and Republican propaganda, Republican pandering to racists, Republican getting their base used to just ignoring lies and glossing over them and skipping around them and denying them. That's who you're going to produce at the end of this process. But to the rest of the media, to the Beltway, he's a complete fucking anomaly. They have no idea how to deal with him. Everyone else is sort of like, OK, I know how to deal with this guy. I, we know how to box in Barack Obama. You put David Brooks on one side and you put Tom Friedman on the other mm -hmm. and pretend that he's, you know, this is the center and you should stay here. Uh, they know how to sort of cope with anyone else. They know how to build a narrative around anyone else. They have no idea how to cope with or deal with the fact that Donald Trump commands an army of loyal idiots uh, with a degree of loyalty that no other Republican president's had since George Bush after 9-11. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the story. So it's it's a good column and it's it's a good uh, name check of a classic science fiction novel. And it really does play directly into our politics, which is how do you cope with the mutation? How do you cope with the thing that that they never saw coming? And, I, and we can tell them how to do it. As liberals, we could say, here's how you fix it. Here's why you should have seen it coming. Here are the people you should never listen to. You should give us a billion dollars to start our own radio station and TV station, et cetera. <laughs> but it is it, just from a, a, a plot narrative point of view – it's quite accurate to say that this was a crisis that they never saw coming and they don't know how to deal with it.
we just entered the news portion of our show. Well, we've been doing news all along, but yeah, we're not going to get through all of this. Summer. Here's what we do. We don't mention Rudy Giuliani at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll take a nice take firm 30 minutes right out, out of it. All right. Everybody, uh, you want to see your Rudy Giuliani news someplace else because yeah. such an asshole. All right. Well, so Richard Grinnell, our ambassador to Germany, has decided to meddle in internal German politics by siding with the far right nationalists. So that's exciting. Oh, Jesus. The State Department, the State Department, the fucking State Department got World War II wrong on the anniversary of D-Day. And not a little bit wrong, really big well, wrong. It's the Fox like, and Friends bimbo who got it wrong. And she's there because of Trump. So, yeah. you know, and we know, why, we know why. Yeah, and it is. It's the State Department. And... Uh, this follow was followed by the president's stupid getting the war of 1812 wrong. So it just, it just keeps going on. Uh, this week was the week that uh, Mick Mulvaney fired the entire advisory board of the consumer watchdog group. Yep. All of them. Yep. All and all and as I said, huh? he is actually, even having done that, he is far back in the line of people that I want to smack with my masculinity to put yeah put it in Dana Lash terms. Yeah. Uh he's it's, actually far back after Trump, Trump's kids, Mike Pence. Uh I've got a list. If you want you want me to read let me read this list. Hold on a minute, because I got a list. I got a little list that'll never be missed. I've got a list. Uh yeah, here it is. Trump, his kids, Pence, all the women staffers at the White House. Yeah. Jared, then Mulvaney, Pruitt, Mnuchin. Then we're going to switch and we're going to do Congress. I'm going to do McConnell first, the whole Freedom Caucus, then uh -huh. Paul Ryan. Then we're going to move to governors and do the Coke-owned Republican governors. And then go back to the White House and see if I missed anybody. Oh, Stephen Miller. He's on there, too. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. He's pretty high yeah. up. So I mean, Where's Sessions on this list? Uh, He's... With the women staffers, I'm going <laughs> to. I'll get to him. Because as you know, uh, Janine mm -hmm. Pirro, Fox News fake judge Janine Pirro. Was oh, yeah. Was she had, she, she's making news, isn't she? She, she, was, she was interviewed to be deputy attorney general. And the reason was because Donald Trump wanted her to be. And when Jeff of Sessions, he did. when Jeff Sessions, you know, gagged on that particular, uh, you know, when it didn't go all the way down his throat and he gagged. And Trump's advisors told him if he didn't get with the fucking program, at least give her a hearing, Donald Trump might end up giving her a seat on the Supreme Court. And does he does he understand that the Senate has to confirm that appointment? No, he's, he, no it, it just comes out of his ass. It just he just makes shit. His, her run ins with the law and and having gotten a speeding ticket of one hundred and sixteen miles an hour. In the Barack Obama administration, that would have caused a 17-day on-fire expose on Fox News, starting with Gene Pirro. And why, well, and, isn't and Don, the, why isn't Barack Obama being impeached for suggesting that someone with the speeding ticket of that magnitude is, belongs on the Supreme Court? I think at this point, it's just the threat that I'm going to make you take sides in public, mm -hmm. Jeff. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put this... Crazy, drunk, imbecile, uh, sycophant who just literally lies all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is kind of startling how how she she's really a a female Sean Hannity. Mm -hmm. She's at that level. Oh, she's I'll, I'll, that, actually, I will yeah. put her up for Supreme Court nomination, Jeff, and I'll make you take a position on mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And it really is just it's constantly debasing and humiliating your staff, yeah. making them kiss your ass every minute well, of the that's day. That's his here, whole shtick. With yeah. everyone, and that's why women are so particularly sensitive to it, as I said. He is a person who demeans other people, and he is demeaning the whole country by lying to them constantly. It makes him feel powerful that he can look at the entire country and lie. And this is the week that he tweeted that it's totally unconstitutional for Robert Mueller to investigate him. But this is the week he discovered how much fun it is to have a, an unlimited power of pardoning. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's and looking for more pardon people to will. pardon who have a celebrity yeah, connection or who he can uh, diss some prosecutor somewhere that he, that has gotten on his nerves by pardoning one of the people. It's going to be real interesting when he starts pardoning the people that Rudy Giuliani sent to jail. You broke you broke your Giuliani rule. Oh, I did. 
Uh, Facebook has had data sharing agreements with at least four Chinese electronic companies since 2010, uh, which contradicts the fact that they lie. They, they said, no, that isn't true uh, just a few months ago. So, you know. And Howard they, they Dean lied. deleted his Facebook page. Yeah, bless his heart. And I would love to hear from the specifically from the people who access the podcast through Facebook, how they feel about Facebook these days. Hey, this is the this is the week where Paul Manafort's going to go back to jail. So that's a good week. Uh, on the 15th. Yeah. yeah next Friday, yeah. he'll be taking his toothbrush to court, as they say, because felony- the day after Juneteenth, Paul Manafort's going to jail. There's something awful nice about that. Uh, Betty DeVos, Betty DeVos revealed that the White House does not need to study guns in school to uh, to figure out why there's violence in school. Yep. Sarah Huckabee Sanders paused briefly between two lies to remind everyone that she considers herself to be an honest person. That's an exciting thing. The immediate fallout from the cake case at the Supreme Court is that a Tennessee hardware store owner put up a no gays allowed sign and claimed, I'm going to take more persecution than them because I'm standing for what I believe in. You're standing at about four feet of gasoline flicking matches. So best of luck with Mm -hmm. that, pal. Mm -hmm. Uh, And here in Illinois, apparently Abraham Lincoln's tomb has been named the seventh luckiest place in the world. That's nice. Isn't it nice? I want to do a shout out to Joyce Vance, who's a former one of the many former U.S. attorneys who's on MSNBC. But she's one of uh, she's on uh, usually on uh, the 11th hour or one of the other shows. Sometimes talking to Chris Hayes. She's from Alabama. She's a little brunette woman with glasses who has a very tall husband. I found out this week. <laughs> yes, you, you came running in and said, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Her husband's a judge. And. I said, oh, doesn't this look like it's kind of familiar to me that, you know, she's got a very, 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 very tall husband, <laughs> <laughs> which is very super cute. Um, but she said something this week that was just in the in the process. And she's also a law professor. So she talks, you know, she's able to talk in complete sentences and talk in a teaching manner of, to how the law works. And that's her job. At, but she made a statement about Paul Manafort this week, and you and I both burst out laughing. And it was yeah. she and she was being serious. I don't think she realized she she is there to explain, and she knows that. But she said, and I quote: "The conditions of Paul Manafort's release were that he not commit another federal crime." <laughs> <laughs> Man. And, and I love what you tweeted. You tweeted something about flooding the zone. Yeah. His his strategy, <laughs> this is his strategy, I'm convinced of this now, mm-hmm. uh, is to commit so many crimes in a row <laughs> that they can't keep up with the litigating each one and prosecuting each one and dealing with each one. He's just going to flood the zone with felonies over and over and over again. So they have to keep reopening his case to add more shit to it. And while they're in the confusion, very much like the end of Blazing Saddles, he's going to sneak out the movie Sneak theater out like Harvey Corman and Blazing Like Saddles. Harvey Corman. <laughs> I love that. I yes. love I love that analogy. It's not going to work for what else Paul he got, Manafort. Really? Well, if he's got a fifth passport, yeah. you know, that might be his ace in the hole. There you go. He has four that the federal government... Seized, yeah. and and he's got that really clever encryption thing that they figured out in about five minutes and said, "Wait a minute, you're sending, yeah. you're telling shit to people lie for you." <laughs> yeah, and I have a feeling the people he was texting to lie for him also dropped a dime yeah. with the FBI and said, "Uh, you, do you know that the ambassador to Russia was backstage at the Republican National Convention?" Yes, I did know that. So I mean, come on, it's, I hate to. You know. <laughs> I hate, people. I hate to court the former whip of the House Republicans, Eric Cantor. Eric Cantor, but come on, come on, Eric right. Cantor, who's not been Eric seen Cantor. since. No, never been seen. He's making money hand over fist as a lobbyist. You know he is. There might be life on Mars. That's come on, come on, come life on, life on Mars. I, and and they, it's not they've found life. There's no no little critters crawling around. No no blue eyed, uh, bug eyed monsters. But they have found organic matter. Uh, preserved on Mars, and that's a discovery that is uh, staggering. That should be on the front pages of newspapers all around the world, mm-hmm. as, as opposed to the pussy grabber's latest insanity. And that's something I've been using this week as a guideline, by the way, as to whether I get upset about something, is is this Trump-generated? Yeah. If it's Trump-generated, then I need to stay focused on getting Democrats into office. Right. That's that's the solution. Yep. That's the answer. Yep. Focus on that. Yep. And, of course, uh, you know, sending us five bucks. 
Right. And so, you know, if you're if you're not able to contribute a lot of money to put to your local congressional candidate, go find their Twitter stream or go find their Facebook page and share those on social media. Get involved with finding out who your local candidates are, uh, get yourself educated on them and then use social media to uh, give them a boost because that really does make a difference. I have been told that by the candidate. Um, and if you're sitting in, a, in a, a, a district that's so blue, it's ultraviolet, mm-hmm. go find the district that's purple. That right. needs your help. It needs your help oh, and adjacent. give them a boost. Exactly. Exactly. And then, you know, you should also be giving a boost to the ACLU's uh, website uh, right now, especially with their um, Immigrants' Rights Project. That's very, very, very important. So good people doing good things, and we support each other, and that's how we do it. And I will leave you with that. We love you guys. Take care. Love you guys. Take care. Drift Glass, uh, I want to do a shout out to a couple of listeners who sent mail this week. There were there we got some mail and we very much appreciate it. Michael from also from Alabama. Uh, he is a frequent correspondent with us and sends us all kinds of goodies in the mail. Uh, DVDs and uh, movies and audio stuff. And he's just somebody. He's a great guy. So <laughs> but he sent us. A check. I'm. Uh, pardon me, Michael, for saying this, but it was a f- check for five dollars. And the reason I bring that up is that's what I have asked for. And he put a sticky note on it, and then he sent me a bunch of sticky notes. <laughs> <laughs> and these are little uh, one and a half by one and a half sticky notes that he m- got from some doctor or doctor's office, and they say Ambien on them. <laughs> <laughs> and he wrote on one of them a sticky note and a check. Caution, use of these sticky notes may cause racism. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's Ambien, science. you know, as science Roseanne science. blamed Ambien. So I'm very grateful to Michael for uh, being a friend of our podcast and helping us so much and uh, sending us these sticky notes. They're they're very funny. And then I want to do a happy birthday to Larry in Maryland. And uh, Larry turned 65 and uh, sent us sent us a contribution in honor of his birthday, which is just ridiculous. Yeah. But, yeah. That's the way to do it, Larry. But way thank you, Larry. It. And happy yes. birthday. Yeah. And that's, that's happy birthday, man. Yeah. We're very grateful to you. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website, an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Bailey. Bailey is clearly another relative of our male cats here at Casa DGBG. He's all black with yellow eyes, just as as these wonderful cats are. Bailey likes to sit at one end of a throw rug while his human mommy drags him along the wood floor for a magic carpet ride. (laughs) You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service Go, Postal Unions, letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Now, Drift Class, I want to say something about the Gourmet Coffee Guideline this week. Yes. Because Starbucks sent out a tweet. Their Twitter stream is at Starbucks. And it says, you might as well earn Starbucks rewards for that purchase. Earn 20 food or drink rewards after you spend $500 on purchases in three months. Well... That plus they've gotten rid of racism, so they got that going for them. <laughs> Maybe they used to, they tore up their Ambien Post-it notes. Thanks, Starbucks. But I think I said I think we got to upgrade our gourmet coffee guideline. If you yeah. spend five hundred dollars at Starbucks in three months, yeah, <laughs> we, we might be. Uh, we don't want you to just buy us a cup of coffee. You got to do yeah. better than that. Come on, yeah, we, gotta have a, we gotta have a three drink minimum from you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, what our gourmet coffee guideline really is, for those of you who do, who do not go and collect 20 extra points for $500 in three months in Starbucks, uh, is if you can afford to buy one espresso-based beverage for yourself, we ask that you buy one for us. So that's a, yeah. you know, five-buck contribution. And this isn't charity. This really is, really, really is our job. It really is. And and the, the proviso is... If you're active duty military, if you're short on funds, if you're broke, if you're if your times are tight for a lot of people out there, mm-hmm. this is our gift to you. This is yeah, just if you're a gift. underemployed, you know, and you're really just trying to make ends meet, we yeah. don't want you to donate. We want you to feel that you can uh, that that we're supporting each other 
by you listening and us being here every week. So, yeah. and we thank you for that. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details, both our PayPal postal information and uh, Patreon, and GoFundMe. All that is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties would just like to add... <laughs> Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, and the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.